Hey, what's going on, Miami Dolphins fans? Welcome to the Fins Up Network, and welcome to the first ever viewer mailbag question. And I, I should apologize right away as well. So I threw the, the question into uh, the YouTube channel's community page, and I didn't give a lot of time for responses. So I'm going to just get to the point on a lot of these questions today, but I want to be doing more of this interactive stuff moving forward. So if you haven't yet already, subscribe. Make sure you're checking out that community page. Going to be doing more of this stuff throughout the offseason. So get your questions in, in in future videos here. But let's knock out today's. And honestly, I didn't check towards the very end before recording. So if I missed your video, drop one in the – if I missed your question in this video, drop it in the comments, and I will, I'll just get to it with a comment as well. But let's dive into the first one here. It's coming from Dolphan5413. Why not bring in a veteran center for some competition? And man, I have the same question. Why not? Wouldn't hurt, right? So I was taking a peek at some of uh, the veteran free agent centers available. Obviously, J.C. Treader, who's 31, Matt Paradis, who's 32, Trey Hopkins, who's 30 years old. Or maybe you go down an old path with bringing Eric Flowers back at, at guard and there's been some of that conversation of can Connor Williams step in and play center? And while I'm sure he's probably able to, not as big of a fan of that. He's been an established left guard in this league. Let's leave well enough alone. Let's not move him around. But it's also possible that the Dolphins think that they're just fine with the in-house options that they that they have. There's been reports saying, you know what, like the Dolphins wanted to address offensive line and free agency, and they did that with Williams and Armstead, and they feel that with the guys they have, the young guys that they have with the new coaching, with the new scheme, that those guys can flourish. So I don't think we can panic if this is it. I want J.C. Treader. Don't get me wrong. He is an immediate, impactful player to this, this roster. You slot him in at center, you are good to go. But let's just keep in mind that, you know what, there, are, there have been reports that the Dolphins are fine with what they have. So I love Treader, and I know most of you guys would as well. Just brace for worst case scenario at this point. Next question from Kevin C. It says, what are your true thoughts on Tua this upcoming season? And do you think he can succeed? Well, look no further than right there. Because, yeah, obviously I'm a, I'm a Tua fan. Uh, I think that's uh, pretty well documented at this point in time. But let's go over the things that have held him back in the past. Because I think that's the easiest way to answer this question. Offensive line, playmakers, coaching, injury. Offensive line, addressed. Teron, Teron Armstead, we just talked about this. Armstead, Connor Williams, potential move at center. Playmakers. When Tua had decent playmakers with his time so far in Miami, they've been hurt. Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, Gusecki's been hobbled a little bit here and there. You finally now have Tariq Hill. You got Cedric Wilson. Jalen Waddle came in on his own as a rookie last year. The playmaker question is done. The, line, uh, the lineman question is done. The coaching. The coaching and the hip, those are two huge things because you could say that Brian Flores and last year's coaching staff really seemed to kind of have it out for Tua. They weren't really putting him, obviously, in positions to succeed. That seems to be evaporated. Mike McDaniel and Tua seem to be very, very close. So I'm, I'm thinking that hopefully that's kind of water under the bridge at this point in time, and that won't be something that holds him back. And the hip, that type of injury, just not even that long ago, well, that would have been considered a career-ending injury. He's only in year three back from it. That's going to take some while, not only to get the strength back, but to get the confidence and the comfort level in trusting it and then being able to get to the hip into the throws. Because if you think about what is everyone's main beef with Tua as a starting quarterback in the NFL, arm strength. You're only going to get – that's going to be your main answer is the arm strength. Well, if he's got that that strength back in the hip, a lot of that 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 torque and that power is coming from the hip. It wasn't his arm strength was never really seen as an issue when he was at Alabama. If he's back to that type of strength, but even stronger as some of the reports have out there, rest assured on the arm strength. We don't really need to worry about that. So I think we're going to see two his best season yet. After this season, I'm going to go on record right now and say it. After this season, that question is. Is two of the guy in Miami isn't going to be a question anymore? Because that's always that's going to be the biggest question throughout this offseason. And I think a lot of Dolphins fans are thinking, well, that's going to be the question until he either truly solidifies that he is or solidifies that he isn't. This season, I think he solidifies that he is. 
And we don't have to answer that damn question anymore. Let's just put it that way. Appreciate the question, though. Next question here from Daniel M. Do you think Zaquandre White can be running back three on the depth chart? And if you missed, Zaquandre White was an undrafted free agent following the 2022 NFL draft that the Dolphins signed. But let's just look at the options because obviously you got Edmonds, you got Mostert, and then behind them it's Miles Gaskin, Savon Ahmed, Jared Dokes, and White. Those are your probably your main competition guys. And I don't personally think Gaskin is that great of a fit in this offense. I think Ahmed's probably even a little bit better of a fit. And while I like Jared Dokes, I see him likely more as this practice squad guy again going into year two. So Zaquandre White, he's, he's got his pros. He's got his cons. Obviously, he's going to be facing an uphill battle being an undrafted free agent. Just making the squad is going to be an accomplishment in itself. But honestly, there's probably is no reason. We talk about running backs, no reason he can't uh, finish as or end up on the depth chart as running back three. We talk about that transition from the collegiate to the NFL level. And while it's hard at every single position, running back seems to be the position where guys can come in. And yeah, there's a learning curve, but it's not near as steep as what you look at like quarterback and tight end and offensive line. These guys can come in and if he makes some some uh, some flashy plays and he splashes in training camp, no reason to think that that he can't be kind of brought up the depth chart slowly and finish as the running back three. I have no beef with that whatsoever. And let's let's do one more. Let's do one more today. And it's from John Jay. And it says, if you had to say today, what will the Dolphins starting offensive line be? And if this is a different answer, what would your ideal starting offensive lineman be? So a little bit of a two for one there. So current options on this team, what I think the Dolphins would be if they had to play a game today. Left tackle to right tackle. Is this how I want to do it on the screen for you? I think so. Theron Armstead, Connor Williams, Michael Dieter, Robert Hunt, Liam Eikenberg. Let me go right into my ideal, and then I'll kind of break it down from there. Teron Armstead, Connor Williams, J.C. Treader. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scup all the way over to right tackle right now and say Robert Hunt. And why I did that is because I think at right guard, you talk about right tackle being Tua's blind, the, the protector of Tua's blind side. If you've got Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, Liam Eikenberg, and Michael Dieter, who do you trust the most of that group to protect your franchise quarterback blindside? In my opinion, it's Robert Hunt. And I, and I know I talked about not wanting to shuffle guys back and forth, but honestly, who do I trust in that group? Robert Hunt. Has, has proven that he can play tackle in this league. So while I, I'd love the idea of keeping him at right guard and them just figuring out at right tackle, if you wanted today to play a game, who I trust the most is, is Robert Hunt. And then honestly, right guard is then going to come down to, since you brought in Treader at center, you're going to have Dieter as an option. You'll have Austin Jackson. You'll have Liam Eikenberg. You let them battle it out. The winner of that is your starting right guard. But that's my that's be yeah, my ideal. But like I said, current is it's Armstead, Connor Williams, Michael Dieter, Robert Hunt, Liam Eikenberg. Probably over a little bit over Austin Jackson, but that can be debated. But that's what I got today. Um like I said, I apologize for the the late notice on asking for questions, but make sure you're subscribing. Check out that community page. That's where I'm going to be putting a lot more of the interactive stuff as well. And if I did miss your question or if you have extra ones, Drop them in the comments below and we'll get to them that way. But until next time, Dolphins fans, fins up and we will see you again soon.